away. My grand pleasure to introduce to you Dr. William, a.k.a. Bill Alner. Give him a hand. Thank you, Guy. It's real good to be here. Uh, my first experience with Roswell was last year at the conference, and wow, what an experience it is being here. It's amazing. So um, uh, I, um, let me tell you, I'll start a little bit with my background. Um, you know, it's true that I spent much of my life as, as a journalist, a daily newspaper reporter in the Philadelphia region, but I also written for much, much of what we call the evangelical press, Christianity Today, Moody Monthly, publications like that. I was also the news editor for a number of years for a, a journal called the Christian Research Journal in Southern California that was associated with the late Dr. Walter Martin, one of the 20th century's premier apologists. Now, a, an apologist is someone who doesn't apologize, you know, that's, that, that's it's only part of the, the topic, but an apologist defends the Christian faith. And so um, I, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing, uh, but I spent a lot of time, as I said, in the Philadelphia region uh, as, as a reporter covering crime news. You know, I did a lot of investigations and things of that nature, and then I started teaching journalism at Temple University in Philadelphia. You know, I'd won a number of press awards and things of that nature, and just with my bachelor's degree, I was teaching journalism courses, you know, basic news writing courses and things of that nature. I didn't get serious about academia, really, until about 1995, you know, when I realized that, you know, they were asking me to teach more and more courses, and I really like to teach a lot of courses, and so I went to my department and I said, what do I need to do to teach here full time? And they said, you can't, not unless you get your terminal degrees. And so finally I've done it, you know, they, they put me through the, the master's degree uh, program in journalism and then the doctoral program, and, uh, and then I, I gravitated down towards Texas A&M in Kingsville where I direct the journalism program. So I enjoy teaching, but I guess my real passion is writing and research. A lot of people out there don't like me because I dare to do muckraking exposés about Christians as well. So uh, adding aliens to the agenda uh, has been interesting, but I do think that much of what ufology is all about or how the movement has gravitated has gone extremely religious. And so a lot of you know that. Some of you that are veterans in the field know that all of a sudden we're talking about all kinds of spiritual things, not just the nuts and bolts ideas of UFOs. Uh, a lot of people talk about angels and all kinds of spiritual topics along with, with UFOs. I do have a direct reporting approach, and I'll tell you what people are saying, and I'll, 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 I won't speculate on on things that I'm not sure about either. I just won't do that. I'll just stick with the facts and I look at it from a sociological method. But what I'm trying to say is that I think that just the, um, see, if, if the devil cannot get people to forsake Christ, the devil will get us to waste our time. And in my book, uh, UFOs and New Age, I call this cosmic uh, tail chasing. And uh, since 1947 to the present, you know, in the modern UFO era, what new do we know about UFOs? It's 2004, folks. Do we know anything about them today? Well, not much more than we knew in 1947. There's still no big consensus what they are. You, know, you can go to, to listen to any expert in UFOs, and there's, even at this conference, there's no big agreement over who they are. I think uh, at least the Christian speakers at this conference generally believe that they're tied into the world of the demonic. I believe that. I think the evidence leads there. But um, they'll waste your time. I know researchers that have spent their whole lives researching UFOs, looking into crop circles, doing all kinds of things, you know, and some of them are getting old now. They really don't have anything to show for it except for chasing this phenomena their whole lives. And they never get any answers for it. For, excuse me, again, cosmic tail chasing it's out there as well. But he wrote a book uh, that was one of the key books, I think, in that era of ufology. It was called The Fellowship. Okay, and basically he called it, this is the Space Brothers Apocrypha. And his approach was like mine to a certain degree. I mean, I, he does have a background as a journalist, but he went all over the world talking to contactees worldwide. And some of them had written down their messages that they allegedly had received through the Space Brothers. By the way, how do they receive these messages? Usually through telepathy or usually through channeling or things of that nature. And these methods, and I can tell you this as a longtime researcher of the occult, are not good. They're not to be relied upon, not to be trusted, and I think they're forbidden in the Bible under the term spiritism. 
Okay, so right away, these messages, I think, are, were, were suspect to me. And by the way, I've been to some channeling sessions in which, you know, people were channeling space brothers and things of that nature. I don't endorse this for Christians to be involved with it, but I'm a journalist. So I'm, I'm not from Missouri, but I'm like, show me. You know, I want to see what this is all about. And I talk about some of that in my first book on UFOs. But in Brad Steiger's book, and by the way, before I talk about his quote, in his um, I did give a summary conclusion in UFOs in the New Age over what my investigation, again, I saw this as a very careful investigation of the topic, and what my investigation has concluded. And this is what I've had to say about the UFO phenomena. And, and you'll find it maybe a little interesting because I'm a conservative evangelical Christian. You know, I really am. And, and a lot of conservative Christians have a knee-jerk reaction. They're going to say, oh, it's all of the devil. But I don't think it was that simple. Yeah, I do think it's demonic, but I don't think it's that simple. And here's what I had to say about it. The answer I will give you in these pages is that UFOs are real, that thousands of people around the world are receiving messages from them, and that these messages are forming the backbone of a new, powerful, new age religion of universalism. You know what that is? Universalism is all paths lead to God which, by the way, is opposite from Christianity, which, which uh, Christianity claims that Christianity is the only way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So universalism is what being taught, is, is being taught f through these messages. Um, okay, uh, let me go on a little bit further. But he's, uh, in putting forward a statement about what the contactees believe, and I'm sure you won't know who contactees are, the people that claim to be in touch with aliens, usually telepathically or other means, including automatic writing and things of this nature. And he told me what the, uh, and he writes what the alien agenda is. And here's what he writes. Contactees have been told that the space beings hope to guide Earth to a period of great unification when all races will shun discriminatory separations and all of humankind will recognize its responsibility to every other life form existing on the planet. Sounds good so far, doesn't it? I love and peace and getting together. You know, it's almost like uh, what Jack Nicholson said in Invaders from Mars. Can't we all get along, you know? And, and then he goes on to say this. And to me, this really rung a bell. And I ran into this very, very early in my research. And it kind of frightened me a bit. And he said, the space beings also seek to bring about a single solidified government which will conduct itself in spiritual principles and permit all of its citizens to grow constructively in love. And I began seeing from that point to the present that if you talk about alien messages, they do talk about a new world order, a one world government, leaping up to the next level, okay, the age of Aquarius, and, and pulling all of the world together under one kind of leadership. If you follow ufology as I have done, particularly the spiritual elements of it, there are generally two large schools of camp. There is uh, like two large camps, uh, rather, of, of thinking about the end times or future judgment. Most UFO cults and people that are involved, even in the New Age movement, believe there's going to be cataclysmic changes coming on planet Earth in the very, very near future. Okay, and there's two agendas that they follow. One will be the UFO evacuation theory. Okay, UFOs are going to come and take us away, and that's what Heaven's Gate thought they were doing. There's the other school, and I'm not quite sure which is bigger. I think they're about the same in size. Maybe some of you would have some definite ideas on this. I can't quite decide. But the other one is that the UFOs are going to come and help us build a new world. And so you have UFO cults all over the world building landing pads. I'm serious. I'm absolutely serious about this, you know, building landing pads, waiting for the UFOs to come to help us build a new age or a new world and things of that nature. What they, uh, what they had believed is that the aliens were going to take come and take them away, okay, and, 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 and then when, when tragedy came over planet Earth, a nuclear war or a pole shift and all kinds of destruction, then the UFOs would bring them back and they would help rebuild planet Earth. And so this is a very, very typical scenario that's being played out by a number of UFO cults in the world today. It's rather startling. But the idea is, why I'm going this direction, is that so many UFO cults and UFO theology believes that we're just like Christians would believe that it's a time of great judgment coming. And this is uh, Brad Steiger again. I'm going to be quoting other people as well. I've quoted him all the time, but I'm going to be quoting others in just a few minutes. But this is what Brad Steiger says about UFOs in the coming time of judgment. Although these paraphysical multidimensional gods, okay, he claims they're UFOs, and he's using the term gods, little g, although they have always coexisted with us, 
in the last 30 years, they have been accelerating their interaction with us in preparation for a fast approaching time of transition and transformation. This period, we have been told, will be a difficult one, and for generations, our prophets and revelators have been referring to it as the Great Cleansing, Judgment Day, Armageddon. But we have been promised that after a season of a cataclysmic changes on the earth plane, a new age consciousness will suffuse the planet. It is to this end that gods have been utilized in the UFO as a transformative symbol. Okay, interesting. Now, another one I'm going to be reading is, is uh, Alusha, uh, rather, uh, Alusha Francesca is another one. And she says this. She says, prepare yourself. And, and this is a directly a channeled message she claims she got from, from her entities. Pre and that she claims they're aliens. Prepare yourself, she said, for the day now closely approaches, and those who are not so prepared must vanish from the face of this your earth. Those who align themselves to the things of the old must surely be destroyed with that age of decay and darkness. So a lot of people that are involved in New Age circles and UFO circles think there might be a great disappearance anyway. That's exactly what Christians believe, except they have it opposite, that the evil people are going to be the ones that disappear. Isn't that startling? And this is mainstream UFO religion, believes in these ideas, a UFO evacuation or things of that nature, or, or the UFOs coming to help save us from ourselves, pretty much. And, um, and, and to me, that's very, very dangerous. But one of the most dangerous things about it, from my opinion, is that what, do, what does New Age religion or UFO religion, what do they think of Jesus Christ? Interesting, interesting subject. And uh, I kind of alluded to this, and I'll quote this early article I did, really, in 1988, UFO cults are flourishing in New Age circles. I was talking about the Whitley Strieber phenomenon there, and I ran into the topic of abductees and contactees and things of that nature. And Whitley Strieber claims to have been an abductee and, and even a contactee at this point. He's very, very active in, 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 in UFO circles. But... Um, I ran into a man by the name of Stuart Goldman that followed Whitley Strieber around for a couple years and read all of his books. And he wrote a manuscript about, about uh, Whitley Strieber's experience. And he says this, in looking at the backgrounds of UFO abductees, it quickly becomes clear that almost to a man, they have some background in New Age or occultic beliefs. Interesting. Studies show that there are very few practicing Christians or Jews among UFO contactees. What could this mean? Are the aliens racist? Or does this rather indicate something about the belief systems of the abductees themselves? I think the answer my research has shown is, has been the second conclusion, that the movers and shakers, I think, in the UFO religious aspect always dabbled with the occult first, something that the Bible specifically condemned. You know, they, uh, as one of the speakers said during this conference, if you want to see a UFO, they'll make sure you see a UFO, you know. A lot of them are involved in astrology, Ouija boards, tarot cards, and on and on and on. And then the next logical step with UFOs. And we saw this with Shirley MacLaine as well. Eventually it led to UFOs. And so a lot of people get involved with new spirituality, as we now call it, and it'll lead into UFOs and channeling and things of that nature. And by the way, channeling of spirits is specifically condemned in the Bible, I would say about 40 times. Really, it's specifically condemned many, many times over and over and over again. But getting back to what I was talking about, um, I don't know of a single evangelical Christian, okay, we're talking about a lot of people claim to be Christians, but I'm talking about those that really stand on the Bible, God's word, okay, that have become contactees, you know, and furthermore, I've talked to a number of people, and Joe Jordan has done some research on this, is that many times when people have been abducted, when they call out the name of Jesus Christ, the abduction, the abduction stops right away. It's rather startling, isn't it? So again, I'm not going to go into any rabbit trails about what other religions believe and things of that nature. But what I'm trying to say is that the theology behind UFO religion is diametrically opposed to Christianity. Now I'm going to read a few quotes that, uh, that uh, UFO people attack, the, uh, attack Christ's words and his mission. And this is from page 178, a contactee by the name of Reinhold Schmidt. And he said that, uh, uh, that through his contacts that he's been told that he, uh, people should be, accept universal laws and truths and that we should get together for a new age in preparation for the coming of the master. And who was the master? Well, it wasn't Jesus, Schmidt said. 
Okay, in fact, it was Sananda. As I wrote in my book here, almost every channeled message from outer space goes out of their way to attack the person, nature, and work of the historical Jesus Christ. Okay, they especially attack Christ's death on the cross 2,000 years ago to save people from their sins. And this counterfeit Jesus that some of them claim to be channeling always attacks Christianity and always claims that the Bible is not reliable. Okay. Now, uh, Winfield Brownell, a channeling session from Jesus, who was in outer space somewhere in November 29, 1978, said that the early church simply taught ethics a golden rule, but the church later warped his true teaching and claims that, uh, that Jesus is going to be getting a new outpouring of, of his Holy Spirit that will bring in the new age. And then this false Jesus said through channeling that the Bible was wrong in many places and that he didn't die on the cross. Okay, instead, his mission was to show humankind the truth of reincarnation. Now, a lot of New Agers, and I've seen this in UFO literature all the time, always affirm the doctrine of reincarnation. They always say that reincarnation was once in the Bible, but the church warped it and took it out of the Bible. Folks, that is an absolute lie. They even claim various councils, the Council of Constantinople, or just several of the councils in which they claim that happened. Folks, we have the record from all those councils. It never happened. There's no rewriting of the Bible. And, but yet this is believed really uh, by, by New Age people, UFO people, no rewriting of the Bible. Hebrews 9.27 says that appoint, it's appointed unto man to die once and then the judgment. And there's a lot of other passages in both the Old and New Testaments that talk about that as well. In Daniel chapter 12, it talks about how when people die, some will be resurrected to everlasting life and others to judgment. So this is very much a theme of both the Old and New Testament. No rewriting of the Bible ever took place. And, and this is even laughable from theological circles. I mean, I went to Dallas Seminary for a couple of years, you know, but this is, this is even, a, it's kind of funny that people would make such an absurd claim. But they make claims like this all the time because their theology cannot be propped up or supported by the Bible. So they pretend that it is, and it really isn't in any way, shape, or form. Another prominent UFO cult um, is, uh, has alleged to take some of the... Um, and he, he would say that he's not a UFO cultist or runs a religious organization. I would argue with that. A lot of you might have heard of Billy Meyer of Switzerland, right? He's released a lot of UFO photos that, that look clear, but I think it's obvious that they're fake photos and things of that nature. I'm not going to talk about the evidence there. But he claims that, that years ago, he, he claims that he had been in touch with aliens from the Palladius, uh, Palladian star system, the seven sisters and things of that nature. That's kind of what astronomers call it and things of that nature. And they would pick him up in the UFO and he call them beam ships and things of that nature, and they would take them different places and show them certain things and teach them certain things. A lot of his teachings were, were very religious in some of the things that, that, that he was saying. Now, uh, he claims that one day an alien uh, summoned him telepathically and told him to be out in a field in Switzerland, and he had something very important to show Billy Meyer. So this uh, spacecraft took him back into time. And uh, let me, oh, right here it is. It's an article. I wrote about this in my artic two articles in the Spiritual Counterfeits Journal. But they took him back into time, okay? And where did they take him? Well, to the first century. And these aliens said they wanted him to meet Jesus, to find out the true truth of, Je of Jesus Christ and who Jesus was. And so um, his guide was on the uh, spaceship with him, allegedly. His guide's name was Asketh. And um, he claims that, first of all, Jesus, that really is never his name. And, of course, it wasn't in the Hebrew. I mean, it was uh, Yeshua, you know, but, but it's been kind of changed, not really changed, but, but like anglicized into Jesus. But allegedly this entity who claimed to be Jesus said that his real name was Emmanuel, and he gave him like five points, okay, that, that he should take back to the modern era in the 20th century and proclaim these five points to the world. Number one was that Jesus, uh, Judas Iscariot was not a traitor. He was actually his scribe who he chose to write down the truth about his teachings. Judas was instructed to bury his writings with the hope it would be discovered someday. And, and by the way, Billy Meyer claims to have dug up this new scroll that gives an alternate reading of the New Testament, an alternate view of the Gospels. And basically, it's like a hodgepodge of New Age beliefs is what it is. And it's been shown to be a fraud and things of that nature. Number two, Jesus explained that he has never been called Jesus Christ. He claimed that he knows he will be called that because his teaching will be falsely rewritten by others to further the religious aims of the Apostle Paul. Therefore, what will be written in the Bible about him will be, quote, deceitful lies. 
And so again, all the UFO cults attack the Bible. Almost every one of them do that. You know, I don't know of a single, I mean, I don't know of a single contactee that claims that the aliens transmitted a message to them saying that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world. You just don't see that. You don't see it at all, ever. You know, you don't see it. Point number three, this false Jesus told Billy Meyer that he never died in the cross. Well, as Paul said, without the cross, there's no resurrection, and then therefore you have no hope. Number four, he denied his virgin birth and told Meyer that his father was a man called Ishrich Gabriel, who is apparently trained by the Palladians, trained by the aliens. And number five, he denied that he was the creator or the son of God. Now, Jesus most assuredly affirmed himself being the son of God and even the creator. In fact, in John chapter 8 and chapter 9, People picked up stones because they wanted to stone him, because he said, before Abraham was, I am. Now, some of you that know about Bible scholarship, what's the I am come from? Well, when Moses went and asked, who should I say sent me? And God says, tell them I am that I am. So Jesus, and this is one of the doctrinal points of Christianity. I mean, Orthodox Christians, and I would affirm this, believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. I mean, even though Jesus was the Son, he was also the Father. I mean, I'm making it very simplistic. Don't ask me to explain the whole doctrine of the Trinity. Maybe Mike can, but I believe the one or three and three are one. But Jesus was, was, was claiming to be the creator. Before Abraham was, I am. You know, so it's interesting how that went on. But again, I'm quoting these people, their own words, and my books are filled with their quotations of what they're saying and what they really mean about certain things. And uh, to really illustrate a point that I don't think that anyone should be so obsessed with, with UFO religion because it's the wrong faith. It'll guide you into the new age. It'll guide you into spiritism and all kinds of things condemned in the Bible. And it'll guide you into danger. And part of UFOlogy, I think, is very dangerous. And this is why, and I think in many ways it's dangerous, not just spiritually, but it's physically dangerous to some people. In my book, I talk about the death of Gloria Lee, December 2nd, 1962. Some of you that study UFOs from a historic perspective know about this story. But in 1962, there's a woman by the name of Gloria Lee that, that fell into a trance, and she was in contact through telepathy with a space brother that she called J.W. Now, I don't know what J.W. stood for, but J.W. And this, this person, this, this entity, would keep talking to her, like through telepathy and automatic writing and different things. And she hooked up with a UFO group called the Mark Age Group of Miami. It used to be a real famous uh, UFO organization. And she said that she was told by the Space Brothers that she's supposed to go to the government. Okay, go warn the United States government and the Russian government, if she could, to convince it to change its warlike ways. You know, again, the Cold War was big in that time period and things of that nature. And they instructed her to go to Washington, D.C. to warn the government to change its warlike ways. Now, she identified this being as an etheric being from Jupiter, okay? UFO circles, I mean, yeah, etheric means spiritual being from Jupiter. So if you look at UFO cults and things of that nature, a lot of them believe in not just physical nuts and bolts beings out there, but they believe that there are spirit beings out there. And, and, but nevertheless, they're all space brothers. And she gets to Washington, D.C., and this entity orders her on a fast to purify herself for the task. And so the, ta the fast she went on, she didn't eat or drink anything for five days. It went on for 10 days, and she kept saying, should I keep going? And the entity said, yeah, keep going. She fasted for 66 days, fell into a coma, and died. I mean, that's the outworking, I think, of UFO theology. I think it's dangerous to your soul. I think it can be physically dangerous from time to time. And there's been a lot of UFO researchers, researchers, and in fact, we've seen some at this conference. I'm not going to cite them. A lot of you haven't been to the whole conference. But there's a lot of evidence that there's physical danger associated with messing around or dabbling with aliens. Okay, with that much said, I mean, there's a lot more I could say about this. As you probably know, I could talk about this all day long. Um, I'll just end it with, with basic, basically saying that I do think that uh, I know who the aliens are, and I think they're associated with the realm of the demonic. And past centuries, I think people knew this to a certain degree, because UFOs are nothing new and aliens are nothing new. It's just they called them by different names in different centuries, right? Fairies and gnomes, things of that nature. They were always identified with demons. They even had the incubi and succubi that were, that were destructive demons, okay, in the Middle Ages and beyond, that would even get involved with, with, with sexual experiments with people and things of that nature. The problem is today is that we think they're all good. They're still little men in most cases, and, but now they claim to be coming out of flying saucers. 
And so I'm not here as a preacher to try to win you over and getting saved and things of that nature, although it would be good if you did, but that's not my purpose. I do want you to think through the implications of UFOs and realize that the theology from the UFO movement is diametrically opposed to the Bible, and I do think that they are absolutely demonic, okay? There's a demonic element to little green men or aliens and through contacts and things of that nature, and we know that because the message is diametrically opposed to God's word, the Bible. And the way they'll lead you is away from Christ. And I think on the basis of that, we can conclude that they, it's a non-Christian, excuse me, non-Christian religious system. Okay. <laughs>